Good morning, and welcome to St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. Thank you for spending some time with us this morning. <clears throat> the only announcement I do have, and I guess they're gone, I thought the Christmas decorations were still up, but <laughs> so that's not an announcement. Uh, but we're glad to have you. If you're visitors and you haven't signed the guest register, if you'd like to do that, uh, that'd be fine. Um, to all of us in the sanctuary, anyone in the parking lot, and all of you on Zoom, feel God's presence and know his everlasting love. And we have with us. Reverend Keith. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's nice to be back with you again. Welcome to all who are here. If you're worshiping in person or online through Zoom or in the parking lot, uh, we welcome you. And if you're a visitor among us, a very special welcome to you, too. So I feel like I'm just uh, catching up my breath after uh, Christmas and New Year's and all of that and the big storm that we had and hopefully you're, uh, you are able to uh, relax a little bit now and settle down and wait for the next storm, <laughs> which we may get uh, tomorrow, I understand. So uh, again, uh, welcome. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we, as we listen to the prelude. for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Oh. 
Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us, that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, of Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Don't you sit at the right hand of the Father. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you and joyfully find you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 49. Listen to me, O coastlands, and pay attention to your peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While, in my, while I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward is with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him? For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to rise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, and my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. This is the word of the Lord. Good God. We will now read responsibly. Psalm 40. I waited patiently upon the Lord who stooped to me and heard my cry. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe, 
and put their trust in the Lord. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. In your plans for us, none can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. And so I said, here I am, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is writ, written to me. I proclaimed righteousness in the great assembly. I have not restrained my lips, O Lord, you know. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. May your steadfast love and your truth continually keep me safe. <clears throat> Children's time for all ages. I'd like to invite uh, children to come up. Good morning. Good morning. It's Liz and Joan and Genevieve, Genevieve and Martin. Okay, great to, great to see you this morning. And um, I wanted to uh, start by asking you a question. And that is, uh, when someone new moves into your neighborhood, or if you meet someone new uh, maybe in school or on the playground. How do you get to know that person? What's the what? What do you what do you do to get to know that person? Maybe you might uh, go up and introduce yourself and and uh, say your name. You might do that if you're an outgoing person. If you're not an outgoing person, maybe you might um, just sit and uh, observe that person. Uh, uh, just see how that person is acting and, and uh, notice what they're doing. Uh, perhaps you have a new neighbor that has a dog and you think to yourself, oh, that, that person has a dog, and I have a dog. That's the point. That's the point of uh, conversation where we can we can talk. You know, we can talk about our dogs and get involved that way. So there's a wonderful uh, story in our gospel reading today, where uh, John the Baptist and his disciples. Uh, disciples just means followers. John and his followers are out, and Jesus comes walking along, and John the Baptist says, Behold, the Lamb of God, referring to Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And, and John's followers or disciples, they start following Jesus. And then all of a sudden, Jesus turns around and he says, what are you looking for? And the disciples don't say anything, but they, at first, and they answer his question by asking Jesus a question. They say, where are you staying? 
And that's another way of saying, where do you come from? Where do you come from? When, when we don't know someone, a good question is, where do you come from? Because if we know where someone comes from, we know, we start to know a lot about that person. So Jesus doesn't say anything except he says, come and see, come and see. So he's, he's inviting John's disciples to come and see. Come and see what I'm doing. Come and see what I'm all about. So uh, we don't, of course, see Jesus or know Jesus in the flesh as the first disciples did. But we learn about who Jesus is by the love and caring that we see from other people around us um, who, are, who are his followers today. The people we see and know here in church. And other people, especially those who are new, people who are new who come to this church, how do you think they get introduced to Jesus? Well, it's by how uh, we love them, how we love them. There's a great camp song. You probably don't know it now, but I'm sure if you stay around in this church long enough, you're going to learn it. It's called, They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love. And the chorus of that goes like this. And they, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. So it's what others see in us uh, and our love that's really important. Well, thank you for coming up today. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Good to, good to see you. The second reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, Back down, buddy. and our brothers of Sothenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the real feeling of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so, the, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. May we stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. In the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 1 verses 29 
through 42. Glory to you, O God. John the Baptist <clears throat> saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And then, and John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you this day. In today's gospel, John the Baptist calls Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, what does it mean to say that this Lamb of God is able to take away such sin? That's what I want us uh, to focus on this morning. When Russia invaded Ukraine almost a year ago, we felt outrage. How is it possible, we asked, for members of the human race, fellow citizens of the world, to be filled with so much hate, to be vengeful for people they haven't even met, that they would do something like this? I know plenty of people who see in the face of Vladimir Putin, the very incarnation of evil. Of course, the answer is that human beings do this all the time. Pick up a history book and the story is there for all to see. Many People have noted that the 20th century was perhaps the bloodiest century of all humanity, with two major world wars, the Nazi Holocaust, and a number of lesser wars, though no less deadly. Perhaps we thought that with the turn of a new century, we were growing out of such horrors. But then came September the 11th, 2001, and the destruction of the World Trade Center, 
and the attack on the Pentagon, and we were off to the races again, even in a new century. It really is enough to make one have a sense of shame at being a member of the human race. Perhaps I am being too dramatic. Forget, let's forget how we act on a larger scale in mobs and violence worked by nations in the name of national self-interest. Look at us as individuals. And how about the well-educated suspect recently caught by law enforcement who is charged with killing four University of Idaho students? What kind of a person does a thing like that? What were his motives? Lots of questions that need to be answered there. A number of years ago, when the Nobel Prize for Literature was given to the English novelist William Golden, author of Lord of the Flies, a reporter asked Golden what he had learned in his lifetime of observing humanity. And Golden replied, I have learned that humanity makes evil the same way that a bee makes honey. Now what about us so-called ordinary people? All of our little daily meanness and viciousness, our failures at love, marriage, friendship, or even getting along in a Christian congregation. If one really thinks about it, it is enough to fill one with shame too. It was Paul, Saint Paul, who said so well, I do not understand my own actions, for I do not know what I want, but the very thing I hate. This insight was brought, about, uh, brought out so well in C.S. Lewis's uh, book of many years ago, The Screwtape Letters. Uh, through satire, Lewis exposed our own moral compromises, our evasions and hypocrisies, the little lies that we tell ourselves that are not important because they are so little. Of course, there is a word in the Christian tradition for the source of this shame. You know it, and I know it the word sin. We are sinners, all of us. Some of us uh, sin in large, splashy ways that make the daily paper or the evening news. But most of us sin in much less spectacular fashion, but in equally hurtful ways. Our little lies, our deceits, and hurt of others as Paul says, all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But wait, hold on, there's more. A world in bondage to sin is encountered by a lamb who frees from sin. Here in John the Baptist's words, a huge claim is being made on behalf of Jesus. He is, in the Gospel of John, not only the fulfillment of the hopes and promises of God to Israel, but also for the whole world. Israel was to be a light to the nations in Christ, that light is shining into all the world. A world that is tainted by sin. The innocent, unspotted lamb is quite a contrast to the dark stain of a world caught in sin.
Now, for the life of me, I can't think of much that God has equipped lambs to do to defend themselves. They have no claws. They have no sharp teeth. Uh, they are far from the fastest moving animals. When attacked, there is, there is not much for a lamb to do but to take the blows, to stand and receive its fate. If John the Baptist had looked at Jesus that day by the river and said, Behold the Lion of God who comes to track down sinners in the world, it would have made good sense. But in calling Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, John is revealing something very, very peculiar to the way that God saves us in Jesus Christ. Throughout Scripture, lambs are associated with gentleness, with innocence, and dependence. God is the shepherd who gathers the lambs in because they are so helpless, says Isaiah. In God's coming kingdom, the lamb will feed and lie down with the wolf, again, uh, says Isaiah. In speaking of the vulnerability of his disciples, Jesus says that he sends them out as lambs in the middle of wolves. For John to say that Jesus is the Lamb of God is to speak of the surprisingly gentle way that God deals with our sin. Our sin deserves fierce rebuke, judgment, condemnation, and punishment. And yet, in the face of our horrible sin, we get an innocent lamb. We expected God to come into the world as a warrior, as the Messiah who would execute fierce and terrible judgment well-deserved judgment upon our sin. And what we got was a lamb. Most numerous of all the images of the lamb in scripture are passages that relate the lamb with sacrifice. Lambs are specifically related to sacrifice in more than 80 passages throughout Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. Paul calls Jesus the Paschal Lamb. In the book of Revelation, the Lamb as a title for Christ appears 28 times. The gentle Lamb and our terrible sin are linked together throughout Scripture. <clears throat> In many of our halls of justice. Uh, there is a statue that is the symbol of our judicial system. There is a blindfolded woman holding in one hand the scales of justice and in the other a huge sword. This is our notion of justice. Impartial, detached judgment on the one hand, and strong, fierce retribution on the other. In contrast, in many churches, there are paintings and sculptured images of a lamb, a lamb with a gash in its side, bleeding, yet with light streaming from its head. Here is the lamb that takes away the great burden, the great guilt and shame of the world by entering the world, by becoming human. For God so loved the world 
that Jesus came among us. This world, this hurting, terribly sinful world, is the world that was embraced by Jesus. This world, our world. So today's gospel says something very dramatic and very, very revealing about Jesus. And yet it also, I think, has implications for us as followers, for those of us uh, who would be disciples of Jesus. We are followers of the Lamb. And as followers of the Lamb, we must encounter the sin of the world as he, Jesus, encountered it. We must wage war against evil with the weapons that Jesus used. And what is our weapon? Our weapon is love. Martin Luther King, throughout his writing and preaching, frequently spoke of the weapon of love. As a young man in his late 20s, uh, becoming a leader in the civil rights movement, in the Montgomery boycott, with his followers beaten and thrown into jail, King said, we will counter your force with soul force. We will match your ability to hate with our ability to love. And this was King's uh, weapon of love that he often talked about. And it was an extremely effective weapon. It was the use of this weapon uh, that King thought changed America. May it be so for us too. Amen.
Let us now confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's holy Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment, discernment, wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fears so that we may serve and love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habits in peril due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our vision. Raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights, especially Amnesty International. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experience hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship. And, remember, and we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over all those who travel. Heal the sick and speed their recovery. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, in our hope, you bring life out of death. And you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise. And bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all nations, we lift before you the people of Ukraine. We ask your power at work for those whose lives are being torn apart, both under assault and those being forced into violence beyond their nature. Guide the leaders of all nations that wisdom and compassion may reign. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, we lift before you particular situations or people, aloud, silently, or by chat. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs by your spirit. 
Gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us exchange the peace. Peace be with you. 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 We'll continue now with the offering. Stand, please. <clears throat> Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive our offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You, you we magnify and adore. Through Jesus our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. 
And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, blessed and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God.
For those in the parking lot and on Zoom, take and eat, for this is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you. This is the body of Christ for you. Mm -hmm. Take and drink the body of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. <clears throat> the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod. Bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. <laughs> Peace, follow the way of Jesus.